Now, if you're new here, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. My name is Ace Trainer Liam, and I'm a huge Pokemon fan and just a lover of all things Pokemon. And in this series, Pokemon WTF Moments, I look back through the Pokemon anime and point out all the goofs and gaffs and generally just poke fun at our favourite less than perfect anime. After all, none of us are perfect, we all have flaws, we all make mistakes. But sometimes it's just way more fun to look at other people's mistakes. And let me tell you, the first Pokemon movie is full of them. Now, I first saw this movie back when it first hit UK theatres and honestly it's as magical and as captivating today as it was back then. What I mean by that is it's an absolute mess. Now right off the bat, just to clear up any confusion, I'm going to be going with the UK DVD release version of this movie, which means that I won't be covering the uncut story of Mewtwo's origin because frankly, it's boring as shit and a really lame addition to the movie. I mean, it's effectively just a really long, dull, deleted scene. Mewtwo having a clone baby human friend is completely pointless when he doesn't even mention her throughout the entire film. Like you'd think at least once he'd be like, why aren't the humans more like my old friend Amber? But he's not, he doesn't mention her at all, so it's completely pointless. Well, actually Liam, I think you'll find Mewtwo has no memory of Amber because the humans wiped his memories of her. Yeah, and the fact that Mewtwo having those memories erased had zero impact on the rest of the movie just shows how pointless that little prologue is. Also, I haven't included Pikachu's Summer Vacation in this because even though it did play before the movie in theaters, it's technically not a part of the movie. Who knows, maybe if there's enough demand for it, I'll do a Pikachu's Vacation spin-off WTF Moments video. We'll see. All right, now we're on to the actual movie. We need to address Mewtwo doing everybody's favorite trope of repeating every last word of things that people have said to him as a question. Like when Dr. Fuji says, let us hear its psychic powers, Mewtwo just responds, psychic powers? And he does this constantly. Much in the same way that Solid Snake constantly repeats the last word that was said to him as a question, Mewtwo is just as bad. Dr. Fuji explains that they created Mewtwo, Mewtwo. After several failed attempts to clone Mew from Mew's DNA. Hang on a minute then, if they've had several failed attempts to clone Mew, then how is this Mewtwo? Surely Mewtwo was one of the failed experiments, as was Mew3, Mew4, Mew5, and so on. So what you're telling us here, Fuji, is this right here should be at least Mew20. After hearing that Dr. Fuji is excited to start the real experiments, now that they have a successful clone of Mew, complete with improvements, Mewtwo deduces that the humans don't care for him at all. Mate, I would argue that they care a lot about you. You're their meal ticket. Whilst Mewtwo contemplates his existence, he looks down at his hands and must be wondering why they gave him testicles instead of fingers. After all, Mew doesn't have bollocks for fingers. After Mewtwo throws a proper wobbly and starts destroying the lab, all these robot arms come from nowhere to try and restrain him. But what were they even for in the first place? Like, you mean to tell me that when they built this lab, they were like, oh, just in case we do create a successful clone but can't control it, can you install like a hundred robot arms and program them to fly from out of nowhere at the first sign of danger? And even if they did get them installed and programmed like that, why wouldn't they have come out when Mewtwo first smashed open the tank? <laughs> Okay, so Mewtwo just murdered at least 10 scientists, if not more, and anybody else that might have been working at that facility. He didn't even check to see if there was anybody there that would care about him. He didn't check to see if they had families, kids, pets, nothing. He literally took all those lives in one fell swoop just because he felt a bit lonely. Mewtwo's a sociopath pass it on. Mewtwo tells nobody, because everybody around him is dead, to behold his power, which they can't do because they're dead, and says he's the strongest Pokemon in the world, stronger even than Mew. I mean, that's not exactly hard, mate. There are a bunch of Pokemon, even back in Gen 1, that could give Mew a run for its money. Alakazam, Gengar, Dragonite, even Gyarados could realistically beat Mew. It does make me wonder why they even chose Mew as the Pokemon to clone for this experiment. Like, I get that it's rare, and maybe they wanted to preserve it, but if Geo Giovanni, the boss of Team Rocket, wanted them to create the most powerful Pokemon in the world, surely they should have used a more powerful Pokemon as the base. Incidentally, Mewtwo did clone a Gyarados later in the movie, so he's kind of lucky that that Gyarados clone didn't realize its true potential. For saying Mewtwo has no trust for humans, he's way too quickly manipulated by Giovanni. Giovanni's like, I can help you focus that power, and Mewtwo's like, nah, I can do it myself. No, you can't. Oh, I guess you're right. Mewtwo, mate, show some balls. You've got six of them on your hands alone. 
own. Have you ever wondered what all this stuff connected to Mewtwo's armor actually does? It's only ever attached to Mewtwo when he's in this room, so I figured that maybe it reduces his strength so that he can't move around the room and potentially leave, but as we see in a few moments, he just escapes anyway. It's just so weird that he readily accepts all of this and never questions why Persian, for example, is allowed to walk around freely whilst he has to stay locked up in here when not in use. For saying he's such an intelligent Pokemon, this movie does a great job of making Mewtwo seem really fucking dumb. Imagine needing to use the ultimate Pokemon and a team of Team Rocket grunts in order to catch a herd of Tauros. Ash Ketchum did the same thing with just Brock helping him. Hey, we got to see Gary Gary in the flashback, but why don't we get to see Gary Gary more in this movie? One of the trainers in this movie is literally voiced by the same person as Gary Gary, so why couldn't we have included him instead? Gary Gary got screwed. Hashtag justice for Gary Gary. I mean, everyone's memory gets wiped at the end of the movie, so it's not like it would have made a big difference. I'll tell you what does make a difference though, hitting the like button to show you're enjoying this video and sharing the video on Facebook or Twitter or one of those places, anywhere, as long as you post the link somewhere, YouTube will appreciate it and start sharing this video with more people. Thank you very much to everybody that hits the like button. Let's try and get to 69, 69 likes. Yeah, 6969, 6969 likes. Let's go for that. And if you're new here, hello. I hope you're having a good time. Hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you never miss an episode of Pokemon WTF Moments. I feel like Giovanni goofed here. Like, why tell Mewtwo that he's effectively your slave? Things were going so well, and when Mewtwo inevitably asked what his purpose was, you could have just been all buddy-buddy, like, oh, don't worry about it, mate. Your purpose is to be my best mate, and we're gonna be everybody together, because we're meant to be together. That's our destiny and all that. But instead, you just flat-out admitted that you're playing him. It's no wonder he threw a hissy fit and stormed out. Giovanni, mate, use your noodle. I'm just saying, I bet Giovanni wasn't the only person in that facility facility, so Mewtwo's body count just rose even higher. Seriously, I hope the writers aren't expecting me to feel sorry for the Mewtwo character right now, because after all this murder, I definitely don't. Mewtwo says he's going to purge the planet of all who oppose him, humans and Pokemon alike, so the reign of Mewtwo can begin. Except, as we all know, all he's actually going to do is invite a bunch of Pokemon trainers to come battle him in untelevised battles on an island only a handful of people can get to. Way to show the world, big guy. Great plan. After the title sequence, we cut to Ash Ketchum and friends having their lunch interrupted by a trainer wanting a battle, who sends out a Dom fan. Now I get that we're doing the whole musical opening credit shtick because it's a movie, but why the hell did Ash not pull out his Pokedex for this? He's whipped his Pokedex out in the past for Pidgeys, Horses, Hitmonlees, and more. But the minute he's faced with a brand new Pokemon from the Johto region, he's just like, nah, I'll beat it and ask questions later. The worst part is, we as viewers don't even get to find out what this Pokemon is because nobody ever tells us. Machamp, coming out of its Pokeball, is shown twice for no reason. Now, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I've never made an editing error before because I absolutely have. Because I absolutely have. But then again, my budget isn't multiple millions of dollars either. Now, Pikachu beating Venomoth with Thunderbolt, I can understand. Pinsir, I can understand as well. But Golem? You're trying to tell me Pikachu beat a ground type Pokemon with Thunderbolt? Ah, <sighs> Ash, you've been hacking again, haven't you? And let's also not forget that Thunderbolt can't actually hit three Pokemon at once. Ash is a hacker. Confirmed. You're telling me that this is how Mewtwo is selecting the best trainers in the world to face him? Literally any trainer that wins one battle as this camera fitted Fero happens to fly over is worthy of the challenge. Mewtwo, mate, do you even know what a good trainer is? A Dragonite with a handbag turns up and gives Ash his invitation to meet the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. Now my question is, if Dragonite has all the invitations and can fly, why was the Fero necessary? Surely you could have just had Dragonite flying around with the camera, and then when you'd found someone that was a suitable opponent, he's already there to give them the invitation. I'm just saying, Mewtwo's overcomplicating things here. Team Rocket managed to hold a literal Dragonite back with only a frying pan, and most of the credit needs to go to Jessie because she's still got her arms fully extended, proving, once again, Jessie is hench. Pass it on. Question, why is Mew sleeping in a bubble at the bottom of a river? Genuine question. Answers on a postcard. So Mewtwo has created a storm, which the harbour manager thinks might be the worst storm ever. Honestly, this whole story section is so unnecessary. This bird talks about the winds of water, which is the legend of a massive storm that killed a bunch of people and a bunch of Pokemon who were magically revived by the tears of the few Pokemon that managed to survive. I genuinely, as much as I love this movie, absolutely hate this bullshit story. It's a really ham-fisted attempt to foreshadow a moment for later in the movie, but it just doesn't make any sense. Since Ash 
Ash isn't killed in a storm, he's petrified by psychic powers. So this legend is about a completely different situation and has no actual bearing on the rest of this story. Honestly, it just makes this woman sound like one of those obnoxious know-it-alls trying to explain a situation that she has absolutely no clue about. The guy in the blue vest says he doesn't care that the ferry's been cancelled, because all his Pokemon are water types. If that's the case, why are you even here trying to catch the ferry when you could have just crossed the water for free? Apparently, the local Pokemon Center has been closed because Nurse Joy has gone missing. You see, this is why you don't try and run a medical center with just one member of staff. One sick day and suddenly all the patients have to go fuck themselves? That's a terrible healthcare system. Brock says the missing Nurse Joy looks familiar. Of course she looks familiar, mate. They all look the same. Oh, isn't that nice? Gyarados gets its lipstick from the same place as Joey Tribbiani. Cool, look at the size of that dugong. I always thought the five foot seven height for dugong listed in the Pokedex was actually its length from head to tail. Kind of like fur it, but I guess it really is its height. Even then, this one's massive. The head alone has to be three feet tall by itself. This woman might actually own the world's biggest dugong. Direct quote from Misty. Ash, our Pokemon aren't strong enough. They can't handle giant waves like this. Hold on to that thought, because we're going to come back to it in a minute. I'll never understand Team Rocket's plan here. They want to steal Pokemon from the best Pokemon trainers who are all gathering on New Island, and they have a boat, so why don't they just go to New Island? Like, why do they attempt to help Ash and his friends cross the water? What do they gain from this out-of-character courtesy? Helping these three cross the water just gives Team Rocket three more trainers to potentially foil their plans. Absolute numpties. Direct quote from Jesse. Stroke! 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 Oh, I think we're gonna have one. That just might be the single greatest joke in the history of Pokemon. 11 out of 10. Well done, well done. After the storm destroys the boat, Ash and Misty send out Squirtle and Staryu to help carry them the rest of the way to New Island, which they do so successfully. So what happened to your Pokemon not being able to handle these giant waves? Misty is full of shit. Confirmed. When they arrive, Mewtwo's servant, who is actually Nurse Joy, tells Ash and friends to release their Pokemon from their Pokeballs. Ash sends out Squirtle and Bulbasaur, but not Pidgeotto or Charizard. Misty sends out Psyduck, but not Staryu or Goldeen. And Brock sends out Vulpix, but not Zubat, Onix or Geodude. Come on, guys, you were given one simple instruction. Don't go breaking the rules when you've only just turned up. And wait, how does Mewtwo not realize that they've only sent out a handful of their Pokemon and not all of them? Isn't he psychic? Direct quote from the guy in the orange jumpsuit who sounds like Tracy. Sketch it. Hurricane winds are a breeze for Pidgeotto here. That, my friend, is a Pidgeot, not a Pidgeotto. How do you not know that? Did you not notice when your Pidgeotto evolved into Pidgeot? What, did you think your Pidgeotto had just got fat? Well, actually, Liam, I'm pretty sure this is just a dubbing mistake by the voice actor. Hi, welcome to WTF Moments. You must be new here. Now, we at WTF Moments are well aware that this is most likely a dubbing error, or maybe even a scripting error by the localization team. But a mistake's a mistake, so I'm going to make fun of it if that's okay with you. Okay? Good. Let's keep going. The trainer with the blue vest, who sounds like Gary Gary, remember the one who said all his Pokemon were water types, shows us his Pokemon. And oh look! That, my friends, is a Nidoqueen. Ah yes, Nidoqueen, my favourite water type Pokemon. He says once you train a Gyarados, it's the most dependable Pokemon there is. I bet it's not very dependable against an electric type. Nah, somebody's gotta say it. Mewtwo could have had any kind of staircase or elevator or whatever he wanted built to be able to connect the kind of lower atrium area of his massive castle to the upper floors. But he chose to have a spiral staircase with a beam of light shining down through it because it looks all super anime and would impress the humans. For someone who despises humans, Mewtwo is really desperate for them to think he's cool. So Mewtwo shows that he can use his psychic powers on the humans to inflict pain, and then demonstrates that he can use telekinesis to throw Blue Vest Man across the room. And it just makes me wonder why he even bothered to invite Pokemon trainers to his island to battle him. He's clearly powerful enough to kill a bunch of humans with just a single thought, so why the need for this pointless competition? I'm telling you, Mewtwo's motivation makes zero sense. Now this is a trainer I can get behind. First sign of a confrontation and he goes straight in with Gyarados' Hyper Beam. Why can't Ash be more like this? Mewtwo tells Nurse Joy her usefulness has ended and releases her from his psychic power. Mate, when you think about it, you didn't really need to use her anyway. You could have easily convinced the other trainers to come here without using a human. You're psychic. The only real use you had for Joy was being the face on that little hologram invite thing you sent out, but at the same time, you could have easily made that just an audio message. I'm just saying, Mewtwo abducted a poor nurse for nothing.
the creep. Oh no, no, my mistake. It turns out Mewtwo needed Nurse Joy for her knowledge of Pokemon physiology. But if that was to help with his cloning plan, then why didn't he just use one of the Team Rocket scientists that helped develop the cloning technology? Oh. Oh, that's why. Oops. Team Rocket find themselves in the cloning lab, and after Jesse accidentally activates the cloning machine, it plucks a few hairs from Meowth's tail to start the cloning process. James asks, who's that Pokemon? And Jesse responds, it's Meowth. Ah ha ha, they did the thing from the thing. Very, very good. So here's a question. If Mewtwo has such incredible psychic powers, then why did he never cotton on to the fact that Team Rocket had snuck into his castle or even onto his island? They're just freely wandering around the place and Mewtwo himself doesn't even realize that they're there. And even with all this space age tech, you're telling me there's not a security system that would spot them? Mewtwo, mate, you're a mess. Mewtwo calls all the trainers Pokemon slaves and Pikachu says that he's not Ash's slave, he's his friend. And Mewtwo then throws Pikachu across the room and says humans and Pokemon could never be friends. Weren't you listening, mate? Pikachu literally just said that they are friends. You've been properly alive for all of a day. Stop pretending like you know everything. I swear, Mewtwo's attitude to humans based on the few that he's met is just like when you have that one friend who's been in one relationship and when it ends, they're like, oh no, I'll never find love again. It's pathetic is what I'm saying. Oh, Mewtwo, why did you bother putting out that fancy fruit bowl if you were just going to throw a Rhyhorn into it? Messy. After Mewtwo summons his clones of the Kanto starters, Ash finally sends out his Charizard. You see that Mewtwo? Ash had a Charizard all along and didn't send it out. Of course, Mewtwo doesn't say anything about this because he's probably forgotten his own rules. Between not remembering his own rules and also not being able to tell if all of the trainers have sent out all of the Pokemon that they actually have with them, Mewtwo's not looking too smart right now, is he? By now, I'm sure you're probably wondering why I haven't commented on the other trainers' nicknames for their Venusaur and their Blastoise, Brute Root and Shell Shocker, respectively, and that's because they're just standard nicknames and they're fine. What's actually dumb here is this trainer's Venusaur and Mewtwo's Venusaur exchanging grass type moves. Lads, they're not very effective moves. Even Tackle would be better here. You can't want to call yourself the best trainer in the world and then be this wank at battling. Now I won't lie, this Charizard versus Charizard battle is absolutely badass and really nicely animated as well. Like even today, it holds up really, really well. But this shot of Mewtwo for some reason just makes me laugh every single single time I see it. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I think it's just because Mewtwo just looks so weird and stupid from this angle. I really hope I'm not the only one who thinks this but I probably am. After Ash's Charizard gets its ass handed to it by the clone Charizard and thrown into the ground hard enough to actually crack it, Ash runs over and asks, Are you okay? What do you think, mate? Lad's lying on his side with his tongue on the floor. What part of that looks okay? So Mewtwo sends out a bunch of evil Pokeballs to catch all of the trainer's Pokemon as his reward for beating them in battle. Ash actually has a really good idea here and returns Bulbasaur and Squirtle to their respective Pokeballs, but the evil Pokeballs just catch those Pokeballs. Look, I'm all for addressing the potential questions that people would ask if you didn't show something like this, but let's not beat around the bush. This has the exact same energy as, well, I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field. Well, I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dogs. Oh, and don't forget, name that movie down in the comments below. God, that actually came out before this one. Can you believe that? Direct quote from Brock. Never mind the Pokeballs, carry them away. Now that in itself is a dumb idea since all the evil Pokeballs need to do is move a little bit faster than you and touch the Pokemon you're carrying and they'll still catch them. But Misty just runs off and leaves Psyduck to get captured. Look at his poor little face. He's just like, Bruh. why didn't you carry me like Brock said to? Misty, please, I've told you a thousand times. If you don't like your Psyduck, just release it. Yeah, honestly, Brock, mate, I don't know what the fuck you thought was going to happen. Although look on the bright side, side, because you lied, you've still got Onyx, Geodude, and Zubat, so swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Pikachu starts channeling his inner stupid horror movie protagonist and starts running upstairs instead of towards an exit. Pikachu, you're a numpty. According to Team Rocket, this Pokemon here is Alakazam. This Pokemon is Alakazam. This wouldn't annoy me so much if any of the trainers that were here had an Alakazam, but nobody has brought one, so how could you mess this up? Let's face it though, in Generation 1, if someone had turned up with an Alakazam, Kazam, it would have kicked the crap out of Mewtwo. Oh, and according to Meowth, the Pokemon on the right is Sandshrew. Now, okay, okay, that's a little more understandable because it is the evolved form of Sandshrew, Sand Slash, but come on, Pokemon. This was your first feature-length film. Could you not have made just a little bit more effort to make sure the voice actor said the correct 
character names? Was that so much to ask? Ash jumps into the cloning machine to try and save Pikachu, but this has me wondering why the cloning machine never plucked a couple of hairs from Ash and tried to clone him. Now a random Ash Ketchum clone? That would have been an interesting twist. Speaking of an interesting twist, Code Ace has been boosted this weekend to give you 30% off G Fuel. I'm drinking Shiny Splash today. It is the A-Drive inspired flavor. I even have the A-Drive shaker right here. It's really nice actually, so props to A-Drive for that. Shiny Splash is blueberry lemonade. It is absolutely wonderful. It's refreshing. It's so good for the summer. Bung a bit of ice in as well and you've got yourself, oh, just top tier. Absolutely wonderful. This is in my top 10 flavors. And like I say, with Code Age, you can get 30% off until Monday the 10th of May. Remember, of course, though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because it contains caffeine and because it's a caffeinated product, just make sure you drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead. But thank you as always to G Fuel for sponsoring my entire channel. I love you guys. G Fuel are great. They're so wonderful to us and to this channel and just what a lovely bunch of people. Go and use code ACE, get yourself 30% off. Now, I understand why the cloning machine explodes because I reckon Ash getting involved with the mechanism probably messed it right up. But why do the evil Pokeballs start releasing all of the original Pokemon? Surely those Pokeballs are still controlled by Mewtwo's power. Power, right? Unless that's how they were programmed to release the Pokemon once they'd been through the cloning machine, but that just seems a little bit too forgiving for Mewtwo. Also, while this is all going on and the cloning machine's exploding and all the Pokemon are being released, why doesn't Mewtwo rush in like, what the fuck is happening here? Yo, since when was Ash Ketchum a Jedi? Squirrel and Bulbasaur's original Pokeballs just automatically fly into Ash's hands as soon as they're released from them. Has this always been a thing? I guess it does explain why you never see a Pokemon trainer scrambling on the floor near their Pokemon that they've just sent out trying to return retrieve their Pokeball. But still, I really don't feel like we see this Captain America's Shield-esque magnetism happening in the anime that often. Or at all, maybe. I don't know. Does it? Let me know in the comments. Look, I know I'm banging on about this, but Mewtwo might actually have the worst psychic powers ever. Mewtwo's own clone Pokemon smashing their way up through the floor, because apparently they don't know how doors work, takes Mewtwo by surprise. Mewtwo, mate, you're making yourself look a right knob. After Ash returns with the original Pokemon, Mewtwo warns Ash that it's useless to challenge him. So naturally, Ash figures it'd be a good idea to run up and gut punch Mewtwo. Or at least try. Mate, what part of this is a very powerful psychic type Pokemon who literally blocked a Hyper Beam from a Gyarados and a Flamethrower from a Charizard don't you get? Mewtwo sends Ash flying through the air and Mew turns up and saves Ash with a bubble, but then pops the bubble, which means that Ash falls safely, but quite hard onto concrete. Mew then just has a little giggle to himself. So the impression I'm getting here is that Mew doesn't stand for child murder but is quite happy to watch them get hurt for his own amusement. Mew, that's not very protagonisty. Yo, Shadow Ball in Gen 1? Looks like Ash isn't the only hack around here. I love how distracted Mew is in this scene. Mewtwo's trying to be all cool and evil when he's talking to Mew, and then off to the side, one of the trainers just happens to say, Mew? And Mew's instantly distracted, just like, Mew? But it sounds a lot more like, What'd you fucking say? And then he just goes on to ignore Mewtwo for the entirety of Mewtwo's dark, brooding monologue. Mewtwo, mate. Mew is mugging you right off. He is making you look a proper spanner. Mew, translated via Meowth, says you don't prove anything by showing off a bunch of special powers and that a Pokemon's true strength comes from the heart. I mean, you did just use your special powers to send Mewtwo flying into the stands, but yeah, sure, go off. Mewtwo says he'll block all the Pokemon's special abilities for this battle using his psychic powers. Are you sure that's a good idea, Chief? From what I've seen so far, your psychic powers aren't all that great, especially when you're trying to concentrate on something else. I'm just saying you probably could do with focusing 100% of your power into the fight you're about to have with Mew. We wouldn't want anyone else sneaking up behind you, would we? Brother, my brother. God, it's just the most 90s sounding song, isn't it? Even in the 90s, you'd be like, good lord, this is a bit bloody 90s, isn't it? God, just imagine the scene, right? It's the late 90s. Pokemania has swept the entire world. Everybody's playing the video games. The cards have been banned from schools because kids are trading them during class and other kids are bullying and beating up kids to steal their Pokemon cards. You're all watching the anime every single day when it comes out because you're just so hooked. Then you hear that a Pokemon movie is coming out and you beg your parents to take you to the theaters to see it. And then in the big final battle, all the Pokemon get their powers suppressed so all they can really do is kind of shove each other back and forth. 
Honestly though, how fucking underwhelming is that? I tell you what though, Charizard's got a hell of a right hook. And to be fair, that does look pretty sore. The genuine despair in Gyarados's face though. Oh, sad Gyarados is a mood. Now I get why the clones of Charizard, Venusaur and Blastoise all have these weird markings. It's because they were like the first clones and therefore they're kind of like a prototype. But why does this Pikachu clone, one of the last clones to be produced, have not only different markings, but also a different voice from the original? Did Ash really screw up the cloning machine that badly? Honestly, I hate the whole theme behind the English dub of the movie. In the Japanese version, the theme of the entire movie is all about Mewtwo's kind of like crisis of existence. But in the English dub that we're focusing on here, you've just got Brock and Misty talking about how this all proves that fighting is wrong. Knowing full well that these two make a living off making their Pokemon fight because they're literally gym leaders. It just doesn't make any sense. Direct quote from Meowth, and I'm not actually going to use a pitch or voice change or anything for this one because it's genuinely a very important message. You're right, we do have a lot in common. The same earth, the same air, the same sky. Maybe if we started looking at what's the same, instead of always looking at what's different, well, who knows? And the WTF moment here is, how did anyone who watched this as a kid watch this movie, hear this message, and still grow up to be a fucking bigot? Like, let me just say real quick, if you are a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a transphobe, anything like that, just unsubscribe immediately. And if you're not subscribed, whether you're subscribed or not, just click that X in the top corner, because I want nothing to do with you. If you heard that quote from Meowth as a kid, and that message didn't sink in, then you must be absolutely fucking stupid. I can't believe this epic battle between Mew and Mewtwo is just them in bubbles bumping into each other. It's just lame. The build-up was so intense and this was just so boring. This scene always makes me a little bit uncomfortable and quite often a little bit teary because this clone Pikachu doesn't understand why Ash's Pikachu refuses to fight back and kind of also doesn't understand why it's fighting anyway. So it's literally just here slapping the shit out of Ash's Pikachu and as it does so it's slowly starting to cry and just Fuck, I don't know why it affects me so much. Ash Ketchum is an absolute knobhead. Didn't your mum ever teach you to look both ways when you cross the road? I'm just going to be a pedantic bastard for a moment and correct anybody that says Ash dies here. He clearly turns to stone. That's petrification. Ash is petrified. You know, like blank in Final Fantasy IX. Don't get me wrong, it's a fate that's probably as bad as death, but still, technically, it's not death. What do you want me to say? Jesus Christ, mate. Way to ruin one of the most iconic scenes in Pokemon history. It was such a perfect scene from the look of despair on Pikachu's face to the music that just captured Pikachu's pain so perfectly and you had to go and ruin it with your big stupid dugong voice. I mean, I'm lucky this happens because it allows me to compose myself so I'm not a blubbering mess for hours afterwards, but still. Look, say what you want, but I will never be on board with the Oh, look, the Pokemon's magic tears revived Ash. That's just absolute bollocks, mate. That reeks of, oh, we petrified our protagonist and we didn't know how to write ourselves out of this corner. You know what would have been better whilst also hitting some of the right notes for the story? I'd have had Mewtwo linger for a few moments on the idea that Ash sacrificed himself to stop the fighting. Then I'd have him turn to Mew and be like, Our powers combined caused this. Maybe if we combine our powers once again, we can restore this boy. And then they could just bring him back by using their psychic powers together. Because then technically Mewtwo is still learning that he doesn't have to be this big loner because when you work together, you're all stronger or some bollocks. Pokemon, I'm begging you. Next time you're stuck for an ending that isn't lame, just hit me up. I'll help you out. How is Ash not soaking wet right now? More than 30 Pokemon just cried bucket loads of tears all over him. The boy should be sodden right now. Mate, this movie is full of inspirational quotes. I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. Seriously, I don't give a crap that my mum thought the Pokemon was nothing but noisy garbage. This shit molded me as a person. I never understand why Mewtwo and the clones leave New Island. Like, I get that he wants to go off and hunt for his purpose in life, but at the same time, you could still use New Island as your home. You could easily just use your psychic powers to make the island invisible or to turn any humans away if they get too close, right? Like, wouldn't it make sense to keep Keep your home here so you have somewhere to keep coming back to? Oh, how convenient. Mewtwo's gonna wipe everybody's memory so that nobody has any memory of Mewtwo or Mew or the clones or anything that happened
end here, reducing the entire movie to it was all a dream. Wouldn't want it to affect our precious canon, would we? Like, way to make your entire movie seem pointless. Like, this means Meowth didn't learn the lesson that he learned from translating from the clone Meowth. In fact, nobody learned anything. Except Mewtwo. Well, I guess at least Misty and Brock can return to being gym leaders with clear consciences, because technically they never learned that fighting is wrong. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So Mewtwo not only wiped everyone's memories, but he also reversed time to when everyone was back in the ferry station? When was that a power that Mewtwo had? The writers literally wrote a story that they couldn't fix to fit the canon of the show, so they've literally just resorted to making any old stuff up at this point. Christ, what a way to end your first ever movie. I will say that I do love that in this new timeline, the storm just ends, so it's like, This could be the worst storm ever! Oh! No, wait! It's over! Direct quote from the Harbour Master. I can't believe it. Yeah, right? The storm's made you look a right mug. Wait, so why didn't Mewtwo transport Team Rocket back to safety? He obviously knew they were there because he wiped their memories. He just had to get one over on Team Rocket one last time, didn't he? That's what this is about. Poor, poor Mewtwo. Giovanni's living in your head rent-free, isn't he? So those are my WTF moments for Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Let me know your favourites and any that I missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Head over to Twitch.tv tv forward slash ace trainer for all of my live streams and use code ace for 30 percent of g fuel until monday where it goes back down to 10 percent but until next time i'm ace trainer liam keep on training